بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر So فصل لربك is that the ayah begins with fa. This is to illustrate the importance of what is coming after to connect it with what came before. That it is because of what Allah has given to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The granting Allah has given to His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam that is mentioned in the first ayah, something that has never been given to anyone in all of the nations and peoples of the world. It necessitates that it be responded to. When such a huge favor is done, it is necessary that you respond to that favor. That that the messenger is being told because that huge favor has been done to you, be consistent in the salah for the sake of your master. Just as a small reminder, once again, in the previous surah we read the people who who when they pray, first of all they're relaxed about it, they don't really care, and when they pray they pray to show off. And the opposite is being mentioned here. When you make salah, make it for your rabb. Fasalli. He didn't just say fasalli because the command is done. Like in other places we find aqim is salah, right? Just aqim is salah. But here fasalli li rabbik. For your master, for your for your Lord, which simplifies or clarifies rather the intention. So salli. Allah mentions salah instead of mentioning washkur. Washkur rabbak. Be grateful to your master. Right? When a favor is done, the response is gratitude. So the, the, the way we understand this is that the salah is the most comprehensive of all the ways you can thank Allah. The best way to thank Allah, the most comprehensive and most complete way to thank Allah is to actually make salah to Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is why we find in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when something good happens, what does he do immediately? He immediately makes two rak'ah. Abu Muslim says that this salah that Allah mentions but then pray is referring to the mandatory prayers. That's what he says. Ibn Abbas says that by just Allah saying pray but he didn't qualify. Pray which ones? It means all kinds of prayer. Pray all the time. The, the fard prayers and even additional prayers. But really the majority opinion is this is not specifically any one salah. The messenger is being told whenever difficulty comes to you, the first thing, remember the good has been, that has been given to you. And second, make salah. Make salah. So that's, that's the uh, overall understanding. The majority opinion of nahar, one nahar, which is commonly translated as sacrifice, right? That the majority opinion is this is the sacrifice of the day of Eid al Adha. We find an interesting commentary by Zamakhshari. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah. Aqimu salah, atu zakah. So here the same thing has been mentioned. Fasalli li rabbika wa nahar. Because nahar, the sacrificial animal, what happens to the meat? It's given in sadaqah. It's a form of zakah. It's a form of giving. It's a form of sadaqah. So the salah is mentioned first. Just like everywhere else, Allah says, Aqimu salah first, and atu zakah second. So the, the, the two have been distinguished from each other. But then there are three words in the Qur'an for sacrifice itself, oh, sacrifice itself, slaughter itself, the act itself. The three words are, the, the first one is dhabaha. Okay? So, or dhibh we call, dhabiha also, right? That's the word that's used, it's a common term. This is to slaughter something for religious motives. And this is to slaughter something for a higher agenda. And this, this word has been used for religious terms in Islam. And it's also been used in the, in the most hideous terms too. Because for example, with Fir'aun we find, يُذَبِّحُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ right? They used to slaughter their children. So it's used generally for slaughter. Then we have the word ذَكَّة. For example, in the ayah, وَمَا أَكَلَ السُّبُعُ إِذَا مَا إِلَّا مَا ذَكَّيْتُمْ ذكة is used to kill an animal quickly. But then we get to the word nahr. Why did Allah use nahr? He didn't say, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَذْبَحْ Right? He didn't use that. He used one harf specifically. Now listen to this. This is beautiful. He said, Allah, Allah uses the word nahr. It literally means that which is above the chest. Okay? To cut in the throat. To cut in the throat is nahr. Now, who does that remind you of? Ibrahim alayhi salam. And his, that's where this began. This entire tradition of the sacrifice of Eid al-Adha, where does it begin? It begins with that original sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And by precisely using this word beautifully, Allah azza wa jal tells His Messenger, these people were told, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Two surahs ago. They should enslave themselves to the master of this house. They failed. How did they fail? رَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينِ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يُدُعُ الْيَتِيمِ They failed miserably. Now it's your job to do, to fulfill the dua and the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And what is that legacy? فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ 
one harf. Subhanallah. How beautifully Allah Azza wa Jal places that word, completing, letting us know that the Messenger himself is not only the fulfillment of the dua of Ibrahim, it's the fulfillment of the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.